So, password security. I mean, we all know that password, A, B, C, D, or 69 all day, are really terrible passwords. We know that you shouldn't reuse passwords across multiple sites. We know that you shouldn't write down your password. Yet, many people do these things every day. Today, we'll discuss the ramifications of bad password habits and give you some best practices to incorporate into your personal security routine. And on the subject of privacy, give the like button a click if you'd like to see a video on the best ways to hide your important pictures and video that you like to look at by yourself at night or with friends. I don't judge. The Logitech G303 features a lightweight design, an advanced optical sensor with Delta Zero technology for precise tracking, and RGB lighting to match your setup. Click the link in the video description to learn more. So I don't want to fear monger, but I do want to open with a few realistic scenarios that could occur if your passwords were broken into or leaked or whatever. Even ignoring the obviously horrible stuff, like what if someone had access to your online banking account? Strap in, it's about to get a little freaky. First off, Facebook, or something like Facebook. Maybe it doesn't seem like that big of a deal. Sure, I mean, maybe they'll see that you're the admin of the combined fan groups of both narwhals and five-gallon buckets, but nothing can really go wrong here, right? Wrong. Not only can they glean more information very easily, like your phone number, but they can also change your privacy settings, opening up your account to the world. Doesn't sound that bad? Okay, let's take it up a notch. The intruder could glean information from your friends either by just having closer access to their pages or by using social engineering practices like simply asking them things. So effectively, your own failures can compromise the privacy of your friends and family. Not cool. And that's ignoring that an especially malicious attacker could ruin friendships or people's perception of you by posting things on your wall that are highly inappropriate or asking things of people that wouldn't be appropriate. So now let's do scenario number two, losing your email. This is actually one of the worst things that can happen. Not because someone might read the love letter you wrote in high school, but because your email is usually used as a password and even username recovery mechanism for your other accounts. Poor email security is basically like handing an intruder the master key to your online identity. Which brings into play another aspect, identity theft. By having access to a few of your accounts, especially your email, it can actually be pretty damn easy to steal someone else's identity. Once that happens, registering new credit cards, getting healthcare on their dime or your dime, or even registering their bridge or highway tolls under your name or their name, is relatively all easily possible. So we all agree that password security is important. And yes, some things are somewhat out of your hands, like website security and whatnot. But what can you do to help protect your own accounts? Well, you can protect against hacking attempts with some fairly simple things. Never store them in plain text on your computers. Never write them down. Never use your real name, username, birthday, phone number, or any other easily identifiable information in your password. Never use an easy keyboard combination like ABCD, QWERTY, or QAZ. And there are some other good tips too. Be careful with the answers to security questions. If you don't feel like any of them are strong enough, use an unrelated answer that you know you can remember. And if you have to send your password to someone for some probably terrible reason in plain text online, try splitting it up across a few different mediums. Never reuse a password, but especially for your email. Many people are guilty of reusing passwords, including myself in the past, but please, at the very least, use a unique and strong password for your email. And finally, use two-factor authentication wherever possible. You can learn more about it here, but basically with two-factor authentication, you can have security codes sent to your mobile device or email in order to double check that it's actually you trying to log in. This can really help against things like keyloggers skimming your passwords, as these codes are one-time use. I would highly recommend two-factor authentication. Even if you ignore all of my other suggestions that I've made, please listen to this one. Moving on now. To create a good password is actually rather simple, and if you'd like to see a great infographic on it, look up XKCD password strength. In that infographic, it is stated that, and I quote, through 20 years of effort, we've successfully trained everyone to use passwords that are hard for humans to remember, but easy for computers to guess, end quote. 
I completely and wholeheartedly agree with this. Stop using short but insanely complicated passwords and start using long and more simple ones that you can actually remember. This will help you to not write them down or store them somewhere and makes them actually a lot harder to break. A trick I use is describing something in my environment. For instance, this is a long skinny white tube that happens to have tape on it. So I could make my password long skinny white tube tape and it would actually be a pretty secure as long as I don't break any of the other rules as well. But this really isn't enough. There's still a huge amount of unique and long passwords to remember, so you might be inclined to tell your browser to remember your password for a certain website. Don't do that. Chrome's passwords are encrypted based on your Windows login password, the security of which is iffy at best, considering there's a few ways to decipher them quite easily. And Firefox's passwords are normally very easily accessible unless you set your own master password, which for whatever reason, it doesn't prompt you to do at this time. So how do you remember them all? Well, I'd recommend using a third-party password manager. For cloud-based options, you have LastPass, Dashlane, and 1Password, amongst others. And for local storage options, you have KeePass, RoboForm, and PasswordSafe, again, amongst others. There are positives and negatives to each of these solutions, but that may be for another video at another time. A different route than these would be if you would like to use TrueKey from Intel, a new password security system based around using your fingerprint or your facial recognition as encryption utilities. Again, there's positives and negatives to that as well. And the last but not least option is a physical security key like YubiKey from Yubico. This is a token that's trusted by everyone from Google to Facebook to the freaking United States Department of Defense and that can provide an additional factor of authentication against anything from your Windows login to your email to your password manager itself. So you'll never really have to worry about some jackass intruders Netflix suggestions and ratings invading your chill time next time you want to log in. MassDrop has another one of their pretty killer deals going on today. The LG 34UC87M-B is currently available for a whopping $250 off of MSRP. This is 34 inch 3440 by 1440 p ultra wide 21 by 9 inch monitor. Of course, this product is only available through MassDrop at this significantly discounted price thanks to their group buy model. Essentially, the more people that buy, the more the price goes down to a set minimum, which this monitor is already at. You, you can check out this drop and many others in the link in the video description, which is dro.ps slash Linus Tech Tips. So head over there now if you're interested. That link doesn't really give us a kickback or anything, but it does let them know that we sent you. Thanks for watching guys, if this video sucked, you know what to do, but if it was awesome, get subscribed, hit the like button, or even consider supporting us directly by using our Amazon affiliate code to shop on, well, Amazon. Buying a cool t-shirt that probably isn't from Bastion, or with a direct monthly contribution through the forum. Now that you're done doing all of that stuff, you're probably wondering what to watch next, so click the little button in the top right hand corner to check out NVIDIA's new full desktop grade 980 in a laptop.